Hello everyone, Alex Mastrava here and welcome back to Project Yam. And today we're going to go over a couple of small but important things. So first of all, some lighting upgrades. Uh, this car from 2007, you know, a lot of halogen uh, bulbs that are now uh, being replaced in the automotive industry by LEDs. So we have done some upgrades on this car. I'll walk you quickly through those. And on the performance front, well, it turns out that this car has an OEM air filter. So what a better opportunity than to get this uh, K&N filter on there and then put it on the dyno for some before and after and see whether or not this filter actually makes any difference in terms of power. So let's get right to that. All right, so let's start first of all with the lighting changes. Now, the lighting changes are driven by a couple of factors. Uh, first, I wanted brighter lights. So this car came all around with, with halogen lights from that year, uh, from 2007. And I wanted something a little bit brighter because uh, there's, there's two aspects to this. Uh, I want to see better and I want to be seen better. So let's uh, let's go over the lighting upgrades here so this car has uh basically four bulbs uh, in the main headlight uh, one is a low beam uh, one is a high beam in canada this is going to be your daytime running light uh, one is a parking light and one is a turn signal and of course a lot of these cars had fog lights down here so uh, what i've replaced uh, on this car with leds uh, was the uh the low beam light the parking light the turn signal, which actually makes a big difference because it's a lot brighter uh, than the OEM one, and you definitely want to be seen in this car when you when you're signaling, since it's not the biggest thing on the road. And I've also replaced the um, the fog lights. Originally, when I had my previous Miata LEDs, were not as uh, popular as or as prevalent as they are today. So I had an overlay over here, and that ended up with the halogen heating up this lens it ended up burning uh, through this overlay so it's much better uh, i like yellow personally for a fog light but now that leds are available everywhere uh, it's really uh, it's really quite nice to to put some leds in uh, around the rear of the car so this this actually i think looks and works pretty well because it's got a red lens on top of it i left it halogen i left the reverse lights halogen you can of course swap those out and uh, i did put in uh, some leds for the license plate light so that's a very common led bulb you can look up what bulbs to use uh, on the car uh, yourself so um one of the more challenging aspects of upgrading lighting on these these generation cars is going to be your low beam so this one and and it uses an h7 bulb so this is what an oem bulb looks like except that in this car it has an adapter at the back of it that kind of spaces it out and it's held by a clip inside here so the the issue with that is that a lot of the leds will have an oversized bulb with a fan on the back and a pigtail to plug into your OEM harness. Those will not work on the Miata because you cannot fit them inside the housing with the adapter to get the proper spacing and being held in properly. So unfortunately, you got to go with something that's fanless and they're not as bright as the ones that have the fans. But at least they do fit uh, into the housing. And then this particular one, this particular brand here, um, and you can find them on, on Amazon or, or kind of your favorite retailer. So these ones do fit. As you can see, I've got one in there and then this I have to still swap out. So the, the getting to the lights is a little on the tight side. I found it easy to remove the two bolts for this uh, for this windshield washer bottle and just move it out of the way while I work in there. And then the same thing, there's three bolts that hold this fuse box, one, two, and then there's a third one underneath here. So those bolts, um, those nuts rather, uh, you can remove and you can get this, this uh, fuse box a little bit out of your way so that you can get your hands in there and change these lights. They are one of the least fun lights to change uh, on the car uh, but the overall result is quite good and i'm just going to show you guys how the um how how the turn signals look because they are significantly brighter than what you get from stock and i think that that you know again that the functionality is is really important uh to be seen on the road in this car is uh is very important as it is not the largest vehicle out there so the LEDs for the the turn signals work really really well, and uh, they don't have uh, they don't have an issue with uh, with blinking too fast or anything like that on this car. So that's kind of the lighting upgrades 
I'm going to replace that last uh, headlight bulb there. And then we're going to move on to uh, the air filter test. And we're going to throw that can in. First, we're going to put the car uh, on the dyno. Once again, just to get a baseline for today. And, and then I'm going to put the can in the air box. And, uh, and then we'll see if the can n makes any sort of extra additional power. So now we're in the Miata here, we're strapped down on the dyno and uh, we're about to find out the difference between an OEM filter and a K&N air filter. Super exciting, I know, this has been done before. But you know what, before we do these polls and see if on this particular car it makes any sort of difference, uh, let's talk a little bit about the theory because I think that that's a lot more interesting. So this is a four stroke motor and it works as an air pump. I'm sure that you've heard that many times before but what does it actually mean and, and why would we see a difference from this uh, reduction restriction, which is essentially what a filter or an intake does. So the, the four strokes are, um, of course, the, uh, the intake, when the piston is moving down and pulling in air charge, the compression where uh, it's compressing that air charge and mixing with fuel, uh, the power stroke where the spark plug fires, the whole, uh, the, the piston is pushed down for a particular force, which is then translated, that force is translated into torque and uh, by the crank, and then that's moving us forward. And then finally the exhaust where the piston is moving again up and, and it's getting rid of those uh, spent gases out the exhaust pipe. So. The amount of power that a car will make is essentially a, a net of all those things. And, and what I mean by a net is that uh, there's going to be some additive forces, uh, The uh, obviously the biggest one being during the, the combustion phase uh, where the piston is, is pushed down, positive work on the crank, uh, and there's going to be some negative uh, forces or some some negative to that net, and that is that, you know, those pumping losses and friction and so on. So. If you strictly look at an intake, uh, what it does is that during that during that intake stroke, what you want is you want as much air charge as possible in the combustion chamber. So this is a naturally aspirated car, which means that the maximum pressure differential is going to be from ambient, which is outside, to whatever you can essentially suck down with that piston if it's got a good seal you know however much you can suck down before the valves close and then you compress all that and then it becomes part of your chemical reaction that pushes it pushes it back down during the combustion phase so uh any sort of restriction that acts between the atmospheric pressure and your piston inside your block is going to cause basically what's called a pressure drop and that's going to affect how much air you can trap, how much oxygen you can trap inside that uh, inside that cylinder. And so there's two aspects to this. So one is that you know how much air can you pull through, and also how much resistance does that piston have when it's moving down uh, down during that intake stroke. So uh, a higher flowing intake, a higher flowing um, air filter will essentially reduce the restriction and by reducing the restriction you will have a higher pressure differential between what the piston is able to pull down for vacuum and uh, what is you know what it is pulling from the atmosphere and and therefore you should be able to a trap a little bit more oxygen into your combustion chamber which will then ignite and create a little bit more power and um, suffer a little bit less in terms of pumping losses as you as you're moving that piston down so let's see if the science works let's see if this change in filter uh, is enough of a restriction reduction to actually be measurable on the dyno so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a fresh baseline now the cars on the dyno fresh baseline uh, as is I'm gonna swap out the filter and then we're going to do another pull so let's get to it Just did our baseline pulls here on the OEM filter. So let's have a quick look at this filter in here. And yep, sure is OEM. So let's pop that out 
pop this K&N in, do some more pulls, and see what I can find. So the OEM filter is looking like it's got some miles on it. It's got some bugs inside there. It's not terribly dirty. It's uh, it's not completely brand new and clean. So here's the K&N replacement, just as you expect, just an oiled, uh, basically cotton gauze uh, trapped within a, a metal mesh. So we're going to put this in, and uh, it's a super easy swap in this car, and then we're right back on the dyno. So we did our back-to-back -back pulls. We are here now looking at the dyno data. I'm going to zoom in real close here and just show you the overlaid power traces. It made just over 160 horsepower uncorrected, and there's less than a horsepower difference um, between the two pulls. So... Really, the conclusion here is that no, the, the Canon air filter did not add performance in this case. And, and why? Well, the answer is simple. The OEM air filter did not create any measurably more of a restriction uh, than the Canon filter does at this airflow level on this car. So we're left with this, you know, the same power numbers. So should you swap out your air filter for a Canon? Well, if you like the Canon brand, if you like the reusable filter, then go for it. In terms of filtration ability and capacity, uh, that's a that's a different test and a different discussion. Uh, what I'm going to do on our NC Miata is I'm going to pop the OEM back in. Uh, and and continue using it. It wasn't too too dirty. And uh, yeah, keep uh, keep following us along uh, as we continue our tech talks, as we continue our builds uh, with this car, with many of the other cars. So give us a follow. And if you got any questions um, in regards to tuning, you want your your car tuned, um, or are looking for any sort of advice, any sort of parts, then uh, definitely uh, give us a shout. Uh, email uh, our website, uh, phone, what have you. So see you guys next time, and take care.